So here we have a system that used to have a PSC motor, and I've already gone ahead and installed the Evergreen motor into it. Before I did that, I had to select the voltage jumper that I wanted for the system. The motor will come shipped from the factory with the yellow 230 volt jumper. If I want the motor to run at 115 volts, like for this furnace I have behind me, I will simply remove the yellow jumper and out of the box take out my white 115 volt jumper. After I've installed the white 115 volt jumper, I'll put the two harnesses back on the motor and then I'm ready to wire the motor to the system, which is what we're going to do right now. When attaching the motor harness to the motor, make sure that the connectors are fully seated. On the low voltage connection, if you push it in until it's just about snug and then listen very carefully, you'll actually hear it click. On the high voltage plug, it won't click, but you can definitely get the, motor, the plug in about halfway and if you push really hard, feel it kind of thud when it bottoms out. If the plugs are not fully seated, the motor may not operate properly even after you've wired it to the HVAC system. The wiring harness for the Evergreen motor is actually three wiring harnesses in one. There's the high voltage power harness, which has the large white and black wire, the high voltage signal harness, which has the large black and red wire, and the low voltage signal harness. Then of course there's the green ground wire. We're going to talk about how to connect each one of these wiring harnesses individually. Now there's flags on the harness itself that tell you what each portion of it is and then of course we can use the information located in the installation manual to tell by wire color what each wire is and where it goes. So let's get started. For this particular training model I've left a little box off to the side with the PSC motor wires still connected to the HVAC system circuit board so you can see exactly how I would disconnect those wires and reconnect the evergreen wires to different locations on the board. So we're going to start with the high voltage power connection. It's the easiest one. This is an evergreen ECM motor. It requires power all the time. Since this is a 115 volt system, we are going to connect the white to a hot neutral and the black to a hot L1. Now, we don't want this to be switched power, so we're not going to connect this after any relays. However, if there is a door switch in the system, we would want to make sure to connect it to power that's after the door switch. So the easiest thing I find to do is to simply go to the board and see if there's any unused neutral connections. And on this board there are. There's a bank of neutral connections here and there's two or three of them actually that aren't being used. They're extra terminals for your electronic air cleaners or your humidifier. Now what I like to do is I like to simply follow my door switch to the board because that's my line one power after the safety door switch. And I find where that power goes to the board I do not have any extra terminals. So in this case, I can either use some kind of uh, extra Y connector so that I can get the power wire that was there and my new power wire from the Evergreen both on the same terminal. Or if I don't have enough room for a device like this, they also make um, piggyback connectors. Or if you have the time and you want to uh, use the connectors, you can simply make yourself a little jumper like I've made, where I can connect the power from the evergreen to one portion of the jumper, the power from the door switch to the other part of the jumper, and then put that whole connection back on the terminal where it was. Next, let's talk about the high voltage signal harness, which is the large black and large red wire coming from the motor. This harness is going to connect to the control board where the PSC motor used to be hooked up. So I've left the PSC motor still connected to the board so you can see how I would take those wires off and put the evergreen wires in. The PSC motor is currently connected to high speed on the cool tap and low speed on the heat tap. It has two other speeds on park that are not being used. So I'm going to get rid of the park speeds that weren't being used first because we're not going to do anything with those. And that leaves me with two taps on the board that are currently connected to the PSC motor the heat tap and the cool tap. First of all we're going to disconnect those PSC motor wires from the board. And from this point forward there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can either jumper those two taps together, the heat and the cool tap, or you could run an individual wire off of each one. Because what we're going to do, and I know it sounds kind of confusing, is we are going to connect those two heat and cool taps to either the red the black 
or the red and black wire at the same time. Let me show you that page in the book now so I can explain that a little better. We see on this diagram that if I was using the half horsepower motor and I connected 115 volts to the HV2 red wire, I would operate the motor at a quarter or a fifth horsepower. If I connected 115 volts to the black HV1 wire, I would operate the motor at one quarter or one third horsepower. And if I connected 115 volts to HV1 and HV2, the black and red at the same time, I would operate the motor at one third, one half. In this particular system, we removed a one third horsepower motor. So we're gonna use the HV1 black wire only. Just as an example, if the motor in this system was a three quarter horse, I would be using the one horsepower evergreen motor. Looking at that chart, I can see that if I used the red HV, HV2, I would operate the motor at a half horsepower. If I used the black HV1, I would operate the motor at half three quarter. And if I used black and red at the same time, HV1 and two, I would operate the motor at three quarter to one horsepower. So if the motor in this system was a three quarter horsepower motor, I would simply again use the HV1 black wire. So we are gonna use the black HV1 high voltage signal wire from this motor to operate my half horsepower evergreen at one third horsepower. I would cap off the red wire and simply connect the black to the heat and cool taps in the HVAC system. If I wanted to do the individual wires like I showed here, I could cut this terminal off and put a wire nut on those three wires together. Or another way you could do it would be to make your own jumper, like I've done here, jumper the heat and cool taps together, which will take me just one second to get wired up, and then connect that jumper to the black wire. Now, if this system had a CF or a constant fan tap as well, I would again connect the CF tap in jumper with the heat and the cool tap. I know this sounds a little bit confusing, but let me explain the concept a little bit. This circuit board, when it gets a call for heat or cool or fan from the thermostat, is going to energize either that heat or that cool tap when it wants motor operation, because that's how it used to operate the PSC motor. It used to energize the heat tap, which sent 115 volts to the low speed winding. It used to energize the cool tap, when it sent 115 volts to the high speed winding. We are simply using those relays built into this circuit board, which are built into the sequence of operation of this whole appliance to maintain the sequence of operation with the evergreen motor. With the HV wires connected to the furnace, the evergreen motor will only turn on when those relay taps turn on. So we've just done really two things. We've told the motor what horsepower to run at, and this signal is the on command for the motor. One more note I wanna to add to the HV wire connections. If this was a heating only system, even though it's a furnace, if it had no air conditioner, uh, if I had a heat and cool tap, but only the heat tap was being used, I would only need to connect the black or the red or both the black and red to that heat tap. Conversely, if this was an air handler and used it as an air conditioner or a heat pump system, and it only had one fan on tap that the PSC motor was connected to, I again would only need to connect my HV1, HV2, or both wires to just the one tap. The only time I will have to jumper multiple taps together is if I have a heating and a cooling system or basically a multiple speed system. We need to make sure that no matter what the thermostat demand is, that all of the fan relay contacts turn on the evergreen motor. And you're also probably thinking, well, geez, jumpering those together doesn't sound like a safe thing to do. It's perfectly safe. Remember that in a PSC motor, you cannot turn on two speeds at the same time because you would harm the motor. So all of these taps coming out of this board are isolated. They'll never be turned on at the same time. The last portion of the evergreen harness we need to connect is the low voltage signal connections. The low voltage signals to the evergreen motor are actually 24 volts. So for any 24 volt signal, we have to have a common. In the evergreen harness, that common wire is the blue wire. So we're gonna connect blue to transformer common in this system. If I have a thermostat control strip like I do here, I can simply find that common connection and hook the blue wire up there. If I did not have this control strip, 
I would simply find the transformer common and connect it there. On this particular system, I do have a common on the terminal strip, so I'm going to go ahead and connect that up. Now what we're left with is the four speeds of the motor. We have the low speed white, the medium low speed brown, the medium high speed orange, and the high speed yellow. So what we connected up here where the PSC motor was is simply the on command for the motor. Now we have to tell the motor what speed to run it. And we're going to do that off of the thermostat connections. So if you remember, the PSC motor we took out was using low speed for heat. So we're going to take low speed and we're going to connect it to the thermostat W connection. I've already pulled a wire down, so I'm going to simply connect it up to that wire with the jumper on it. Next, we need to connect the cooling call. The, if you remember, the PSC motor was using high speed for cooling. So we're going to take the high speed from the Evergreen and connect it to the Y connection on the terminal strip. These last two speeds that are unused, we would then just cap them off. So when this furnace gives a call for heat, it will energize the W, which will tell the low speed signal to run the motor on low speed, but the motor will not turn on until the timing in the board sequence is out so that all of the burners and pressure switches and deuce draft motor, everything can get done, the heat exchanger gets warmed up, then finally that tap that used to turn on the PSC motor turns on and we energize our evergreen motor at one third horsepower and on low speed. Now you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, you said the best thing about this motor is constant fan, but you didn't hook anything up to G on the thermostat, so how does the motor know when to run constant fan? That is also another really cool function about the motor. You do not have to waste any of these four speeds with constant fan. You have all four speeds of the motor to use for your heating and cooling application. You've already wired constant fan, you just didn't know it. When the thermostat tells this control strip to run constant fan, it's going to send 24 volts on the green wire down to this circuit board. Depending on how this manufacturer has wired the board, this board on a constant fan call is either going to energize the heat or the cool tap to send 115 volts to what used to be the PSC motor. We've now connected that to our evergreen for our horsepower selection and our on command. So when those taps turn on from a constant fan call, heat or cool, the motor is going to get an on command without a low voltage signal command. It automatically knows to run the super slow, very quiet and high efficient constant fan by the connection you already made. The installation manual that comes with the Evergreen will show you how to select the correct Evergreen motor for your system, how to install it, how to set up the airflow with new Evergreen, and provide any troubleshooting should you need it. This installation manual comes with every motor and can be found on evergreendealer.com. If you should have any troubles with the Evergreen, there is a 1-800 tech support number on the back of the manual as well.